Hello there, people of the internet. How's everyone doing today? I'm doing all right, thanks for asking. Today I'm going to be covering my Zestava 9mm M88A. I believe that's the designation. Uh, I bought this used, uh, but they are still being made uh, in modern day production. However, the modern day production does not have the wood grips on it. You can probably get aftermarket wood grips to throwing a modern day production, if that's a route that you feel like taking. Uh, Ironically, the modern day production and the used surplus production is around the same cost. A lot of times the modern production is actually a lower cost. So the reason I bought a used one was because I wanted one that had some battle wear on it. And this one definitely does. Alright, we're going to go ahead and make a comparison video uh, comparing these Estava M88A. This is the focus of the video, but just so we have something to compare it with, we'll be comparing it with another very popular uh, surplus gun on the market. This is the Star BM, chambered in 9mm as well. Now as far as the guns are concerned, the Star BM definitely feels like a higher made quality gun than the Zestava, but the Zestava is kind of more wore out <laughs> than the Star BM. However, the magazines are kind of the opposite. The uh, Zestava mag definitely feels like a better quality than the Star BM mag. Ammunition today. I'll be firing uh, Federal Brass, nothing special, 115 grain, full metal jackets. Uh, keep it cheap to fire out of our cheap surplus handguns here. These wood grips are definitely the selling point that this firearm had in terms of me buying surplus versus new. Uh, not only that, but I wanted a weapon that actually had some story behind it. And judging by the severe corrosion and wear on this gun, I'd say this right here has plenty of stories behind it. All right, today I'll be lighting up the car there. Nothing real special in terms of targets. <laughs> well, I guess not a lot of people have a car uh, as their backstop. I've stuck a lot of ammo through that thing. If you want to see that crap, go back and just watch the rest of the channel. All right, we're going to start off with this Estava because that is our focus today. Uh, the grip on it is considerably more vertical than... Uh, the star BM grip, although it's not exactly uncomfortable. The Zestava M88A, despite looking like a toke rev, is actually based off the Browning model, so very similar to a 1911. If you're used to running 1911s, then this right here is going to be very, uh, familiar to you. It does have a magazine safety, so the mag has to be in to drop the hammer. I don't really know why they did that, but they did that. Alright, let me just run a few rounds to the Star BM, just for a little comparison's sake. Star BM also locks open. Of course, it's a little 1911 lookalike. Alright, the Zestava is a lighter handgun, like considerably lighter than the Star BM, and it does have a bit more recoil because it fires the same cartridge and is a lighter gun. Uh, the vertical angle of this grip right here isn't that bad, but the recoil is definitely more noticeable than on the Star BM. It's a little jumpier as you fire it, but it's still 9mm, so it's not terrible. The trigger on this thing kind of feels like a two-stage trigger, although it's a very, very crappy two-stage trigger. But uh, as you pull, it's not loaded. Yep. As you pull the uh, trigger back, there's this sear catch that you eventually reach. And as soon as you drop that sear, gun fires. Makes for very good accurate shots. The Star VM doesn't really have that, you just kind of tug on it until it goes. <laughs> both these firearms are loaded, however they have nothing in the chamber. Uh, both these are based off of the Browning model, uh, very similar to a 1911, whenever you go to disassemble it. There's a couple of differences, they're not exact copies, but for the most part, they're single stack magazine Browning model handguns. Each chambered in 9mm, and uh... Huh. Single stack Browning model. 
Chamber to nine millimeter. Uh, this is just gonna be for my curiosity. Let's see if the Star BM mag fits in our little uh, toker rev look alike here. Yeah, it kind of sticks out at the bottom, but it locks in. All right, the Star BM mag locks into the toker rev. <laughs> no way. Oh man. Nope. Guess that's a no go on that. Oh shit. Oh no, it loaded. <laughs> Let's see how well this works. It actually fucking cycled. Malfunction. Get in there, you bastard. All right, well, the Star BM mag kind of works in the little Zestava. Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty neat right there. Unfortunately, the uh, Zestava mag will not work in our Star BM because it's just a little too short. Yep, that ain't going to be able to feed. Darn, a guy can hope. All right, cool. Let me, let me try that again. We're going to start off with the Zestava mag and the Zestava and then swap over to the Star BM mag, see how well it works. Well, I mean, it kind of works. <laughs> Not the best, but it'll run through. You just gotta wiggle and jiggle it a little bit as you fire. But that might that might be the gun because I'm having the same issues with the Zestava mag there. I think I'm gonna get me a new production one of these and see how well that runs. All right, let's put some real bullets down range. All right, I have no idea how well this is going to work because I have no idea how well these guns are going to cycle, but let's give it a shot. <laughs> they both malfunctioned. <laughs> oh, no. God damn it. <laughs> Try this again. Alright, the Sestava actually cycled through. The Star BM did not. We got a couple of failures to extract here. But this Star has always had that with brass case ammo. I don't really know why, but it doesn't have that issue with steel case. My bet is because the brass expands more than steel, and uh, this, this little Star here is just not able to pull it out. The Sestava I have here is definitely more worn out than that little star is. I bought this uh, fair condition and boy is it fair. There was so much rust and corrosion on the inside, I disassembled the entire thing. Cleaned it up best I could, put it back together, but the springs in it are worn out, the surfaces are worn out, the extractor is worn out, magazine jiggles and wiggles <laughs> while it's locked in. Uh, it is what it is. I could have bought a new production for actually a lower cost. I paid $189 for this one. Uh, new production is roughly $169, give or take. Uh, gun came with one mag, bunch of rust, and one gun that still functions.
Can you use the Star BM mag in your Zestava? You can. It kind of works. You just gotta kinda finesse it. I mean, I've had mags that are literally made for the gun that work less than this BM mag in this Zestava, so it kind of works. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can manage to hit that target over there. I'm not the best of shots with handguns. I know I'm not. I'm not tactical even remotely. But I'll give it my best shot. Da -da. Ah, I got it. Damn, I am an awful shot. You know how you change mags whenever you're uh, out of ammo in one mag? Well, whenever you have multiple mags and multiple guns and they don't interchange, you gotta change guns when you're out of ammo versus just changing mags. So, uh, gun's a little stiff there. Man, both these guns malfunction like the Dickens. I'd say that's ammo, but I run this brass through basically all your non-surplus stuff. Runs just fine. My bet, these old war horses, well, they're not really war horses, but they've definitely seen some, uh, some hard times. <laughs> There's no telling what these guys have been through, no telling what they've seen, no telling what they've endured. On our little Zestava here, go ahead and make sure she ain't loaded. Nope, I literally just emptied it. On our Zestava here, the bluing on it is exasperatingly worn. It almost looks like there's blood rust on it. The sights on it are nice and tight, so that's a big plus, but there's a bunch of rust that I'm yet to clean off. We got rust coming out through the chigger housing right there. <laughs> I did oil it up. <sighs> We're actually catching on the sear of the gun. I will show you that here in a second. The slide is actually stuck on the sear of the trigger. And I know that because if I pull the trigger, the slide drops closed, which is interesting. I'm not sure what sort of corrosion or malfunctioning piece we have in there. Perhaps something that was jerry-rigged at an earlier point in time, but pull the trigger and the slide drops. <laughs> now the slide's not locked all the way open. This is how the slide looks whenever it's all the way open. This is how the slide looks whenever it's caught on something. And there's something in there catching it. And I got to go through and clean and file, probably rusty piece or something. On our wood grip right there, see the little CZ emblem? Extractors on the outside, extractor pin retainers on the top there. Uh, side, it says Zestava. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Bunch of other non-English words that I can't read because I read English. And then your import marks and serial number. There's not a whole lot going on with this gun. It's just uh, another surplus little handgun coming into the country right now. Uh, I'd say get them while you can, but these ones are made new production. I mean, you can. Get yourself a used one if you feel like it. If you're like me and felt like having something that was torn up and had some history behind it versus one that you could make your own stories behind, uh, entirely up to you. But I'm going to put some more ammo down range. You know, I bet you if I increase the weight of this recoil spring I have in this thing, uh, I wouldn't have it catching so much on that trigger sear. Man, I 
timing awful awful shot either that or these sights are off Bad shot, but I'm not that bad of a shot. Just how off are, are these sights? Holy crap. Give me a second, guys. Alright, guys. I know I'm a bad shot, but man, there's got to be something horrendously off on that gun. This is the Star BM. I'm a bad shot, but I'm not that bad of a shot. There is something going on <laughs> with that Zestava there. I wasn't able to hit that at point blank range with 10 or 15 rounds. So, um, I have no idea how I feel about that. I'm going to put some rounds into this dirt here. Let's see if we can figure out where this thing's firing at. Alright, I doubt I would ever hit it, but this red tab is going to be my point of aim. I'm going to stand about, I don't know, 10 yards back or so. I have no idea what angle to stick that GoPro at. There you go. Stick that right there. And I'm going to step back to there. We're going to see where these bullets go on this Estava. Alright guys, I have figured this thing out. It fires extremely low. It fires ludicrously low, which you would not expect from these extremely high sights, especially the extremely high rear sight on this. Uh, I was standing about 10 yards. I had, to, I had to aim like a foot and a half over that target. So I'm going to have to adjust these sights if I want to get any sort of accuracy out of this firearm here. All right, now that I know <laughs> where this thing's going, let's try this again. All right, let's give it a shot. Uh. There we go. Alright guys, the sights on these things is uh, tricky. Well, what do you expect from a surplus handgun? I got it sitting here in my little pocket watch holder on my pants. That's what these little pockets are actually for. Some people use it for pocket change. But I'm starting to get sweaty and hungry and tired. Just gonna set those over there nice and safe. Alright, this was fun. Should you go out and get yourself a used Zestava M88A if you feel like it? I guess, <laughs> but whenever you can pick up a new one for, you know, less, <laughs> just make sure you install the wood grips if uh, that's what you're going for, that's what I was going for, but I also wanted all this wear on it, I wanted something that I could look at and say, wow, this has some stories behind it, and this does have some stories behind it, so this was fun, I had a great ass time. Uh, I like my Star BM more, but that's just because of the condition of this thing. I didn't really get this thing to uh, burn a lot of ammo through. I got it because I wanted some other surplus gun that I didn't have. Uh, if I want to burn a bunch of rounds through one of these, I'll just get a new one. They're extremely cheap, and I'm sure that they'll be more accurate than this one. This thing fires really, really, really low, and I have no idea why or how like I almost got to volley these things in with the sides <laughs> all right that being said uh, if you like this kind of crap mash that subscribe button I want to see the channel grow and subscribing will definitely help with that uh, guns and ammo I buy them myself if you uh, want to support uh, check out the patreon page 
you know, I really don't think I'm done blowing stuff up today. Like, I feel like shooting more guns. And I live in America. This is my backyard. <laughs> I'm gonna go do exactly that. I might record it if uh, I can figure out something interesting to record on that. But either way, I'm shooting something. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna go off, have myself a great ass day. You guys go off and have yourself a great ass day as well. This poor little gun has been put through the freaking ringer, I tell you what. I wonder if that's Cosmoline, I doubt it. I wonder if that's just rusty oil. That's that's definitely a possibility because the inside of this thing was just a ball of rust. Wood grips on this thing are, you know, in the best shape and they're still in crappy condition. Look at all this surface rust on this thing. Man, whenever they said fair condition, they weren't kidding. Uh, wow, that barrel is very pitted. Very pitted, to say the least. Front sight there. I have no idea why this shoots so low, but it shoots very, very low. No uh, grip safety on the back. Uh, the safety itself is of the Tokarev type versus the Browning type. Although that doesn't much matter to me. Bunch of rust back here. I'll probably take that off with a wire brush or something. Rusty grip. Who the hell knows what this thing's been through?